Hey everybody, this is my This is my favorite time, my favorite time, favorite time of my day. This is my favorite time, favorite time. favorite time of the day, the Word of God. It's the only time that I got, I make the time. I make the time and I am excited that God has given me an opportunity. And today I'm coming out of 2 Kings chapter 5. Father, we thank you today for your absolute same word never changing all around seasonal word perfectly set temperature right the salt is right the heat is right and it's always on time and it's and it's always good it's so good your word is so good until Anybody that would taste you will understand you need this because it's, you are just that good. Thank you for your knowledge and your wisdom and to see how serious it is, especially during a time like this, that we could take some time to get to know who you are. And thank you for allowing me to get to 2 Kings chapter 5 in a chapter that I've never read before like this in my life with detail. I'm not in a hurry. And I am here to put down something in this life to say I did everything I know to find out what you had to say to me. And then I want to share with people that I love. And some people that I know, some people I know, and some people I don't. May one day that they find this hidden treasure and seek you the way you ought to be sought. Thank you again. Thank you for the listeners. And thank you for the people that will listen later. Because one thing I know, your word will be heard. Thank you for forgiving me of my sins. And thank you for being the right example for me. And thank you for giving me an inheritance of those who know more than I do that are sanctified. That I sit at the table where they've eaten and they tell me how good it is. And then I taste it myself and say, you would you. Half ain't been told. I love this word. I'm in love with your knowledge. I'm in love with who you are. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, people, I am ready to get into 2 Kings, the fifth chapter. I have to make sure that I'm putting putting the right thing up. So if I say anything that, that you know may be incorrect, please let me know. Like a lady said yesterday, she said, you got on you got 2 Samuel up, and I didn't mean to do that. And I, and I'm glad she told me because otherwise I would somebody would have been confused. All right, second king, where we left off yesterday is Elisha dealt with so many people yesterday, and he dealt with the woman who who husband died and left her in debt. God paid the debt, showed her what to do. Now, she had a part to do. She had to go do her part, and God made sure he did his part. Then we met this, uh, another thing that Elisha was, God used him. This is God. Now, this is God, but he's using Elisha to work through. Work him, you know, that's that's how he get to man. He, ha he has to have a body. And so Elisha said, you can use me, and he did. And God made sure that woman uh, debt was paid. She and her sons got together, did what he, he did exactly what the man of God said. 
And how do we know when it's a man of God? Because you can go back and read what God said. He said, oh, he said exactly what the word said. Then that man has God in him. You want somebody with God in him, not what, what they call themselves. Go see what God has in his word and see if that person is delivering out of his mouth what you know is in that word. Then you know that man is a man of the word or a man of God. And then Elisha, this woman yesterday, the woman that the Shumanite woman who told Elisha, come on in. And she fixed him something to eat. And then she said, I tell you what, when you come to town and you need somewhere to stay, I'm going to have my husband build you a, a room. So you, you, I'm going to put you a table and a lamp, a bed, and a chair. And it looked like it might have been big enough for uh, Gehazi because they, every time we looked up and saw Elisha, he had a servant and his name was Gehazi. And that woman had a son, and Elisha said, you are such a generous woman. And he said, what, can, what is it that you need? And she said, well, I, I live among my people. I'm good. And then he found out that she had no children. He said, today, nine months from today, you're going to you're gonna have a son. And she said, don't you fool me now. For, no, now. Nah. She said, he said, yeah, you, I, I don't we have a son. You do your part, and you're going to have a son this time next year. And in exactly the time that the man of God spoke, that lady had a son. Then the son grew up, and the son died. And she called her husband. She said, I need a ride. She, she took the boy upstairs, laid him in Elijah's bed, and then she told her son, husband, prepare me a ride. That man trusted that woman so much until she didn't even tell him that the boy did. dead. She had a discussion with him. That, that shocked me. And then she go outside and say, I need a ride. And he said, well, where you going? This ain't, I mean, what's going on? There ain't no new moon. There ain't no Sabbath. So where you going? And she said, just give me a ride. I, I, it's well. Never told that man. I said, Lord, I know I don't have that spirit. I would have been crying, complaining, praying, just, just panic. Hey, I'm online. I'll call you when I get off. Uh, she, um, Went and told her husband to prepare me a ride. And he did it. He didn't ask no question. I had never seen a relationship like that in my life. And she drove, had a rider with her. And she said, drive and don't stop. Don't ask nobody nothing. And she went all the way to Elijah. And she said, I just got a question for you. And Gehazi, I tried to stop it. He said, leave her alone. This woman got some God has not revealed it to me. He said, something wrong with this lady. And then she said, did not. She said, no, I ain't actually for no boy. But you gave me a son. You told God to give me a son. And, uh... The boy dead. And then Elisha said, well, ain't no breath in him. I think that's how she said it. He said, well, take my rod and go down there and go into her house and take this rod and lay it on him. And, and then she said, well, I do thank you for sending him, but I ain't going nowhere until you get up. And the word said, and Elisha got up and did what? Followed her. And I was just amazed that Elisha got to the house, saw where the boy was, I said, when a dead body laying on a live man's bed, he got to get up. A dead body lying on the bed of a man that seeks God. You got to get up. It's just a matter of time. You got to get up. This man is in the word of God. God is working through him. And then you lay him in the right bed. You dead. You get in the presence of somebody alive, whether they're there or not. Be have you some type of connection with somebody that's in the word of God. And Elijah did what he had to do. Laid on the boy. The boy body got warm. And then he went downstairs and walked back and forth, came back, got back on that boy. Boy got him, and he said, hey, 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 sister, uh, sister, uh, Shumanite, where you from? Her name is not Mitch. Here you, boy. And then we get to a point where um, one of the chefs, a chef of the 50, 50 men that Elijah was teaching, uh, one of them died. One of them, uh, no, one of them said, I'm going out there and get something to eat. So Elijah said, okay, go out there and get something to eat. So he fixed the food and he grabbed a, 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 some type of plant that was causing him to have diarrhea and sickness. And then they told Elijah, there's something wrong with that food. Now all of them, you know, got to go to the bathroom, throwing up and all the different things that, you know, when you got salmonella in you. And then Elijah, God gave him, said, uh, give, give me some meal. Give me some flour. One of them said flour, one of them said meal. And he said, mix it in the pot. Y'all go and eat. They said, then they, that means whatever was wrong was made right. And they got, ate and got full. And then the last thing that happened in chapter four, and this is how God wants us to know his word. I'm not, I'm not reading. I'm just telling you, this is how simple the word of God is. And I'm not reading, but I'm, I'm, I remember what's going on. 
And the last thing was this guy came in to pay first fruit. First fruit is when you grow apples, oranges, grapes, whatever it is you have. And the first thing you get out the ground, this is your way of giving God, giving it back to God. and said, I want to thank God. And then I'm going to give him the first part of what he has given me. The ground produces. Then we take what's out of the ground and we go give it to God. And then he brought it to Elisha. And the man said, I just get, this is my first fruit. Elisha said, give it to the people. The man said, but it's not enough for so many. He said, I said, give it to the people. Not only do you have enough, it's going to be enough over. You're going to have some left over. And a lot of people today are telling people that first fruit belong in the, in the um, pocket of the person that's the leader. And God is saying, y'all better read my word because I'm the only thing I'm going to hold you accountable for what I said. So... The guy did what Elijah said, and it, that was some left over. Like Jesus had two fish and five loaves. He says, listen, no, just let me have what you got. That's all you got, then I know how to multiply that. Because when it comes down to people, God said, I'll make it enough. It come down to people. When it come down to a righteous man want to do something about people, give me what you got. I'll multiply it. I want the people to know how much I love them. And that's the attitude that we got to go in. And so... But we, we glorified people so much until they can tell us anything that God said. And God is saying, take your time and go back and see what I said yourself. Because I'm still going to hold you accountable for it, even if you, even if you say, well, I ain't know. He said, uh, Brenda don't know. She ain't know either. But this word is for everybody. That's why he gave us a copy. And he got it in every language. So no matter what language you are, you got a copy to this word. And if you, if you hunger, if you're in a country now that... You know, it's not popular to read the word God said. Right now, call me. Because Corona, they 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 opening up in some of these countries that forbid people to read the word. They pretty much saying, you do what you got to do, you got to live. God said, if you, if you call on me and you're in a country where people do not allow the word of God, he said, call me. I know I, I can't come unless you call me. If you call me, I'm going to I'll make sure you get the word. But you just got to be bold enough to call me. In fact, you got, you online with all kind of stuff, all that stuff that I see that people do from all over the world. You, you can get in that word if you want to. I'm talking about the word, but I get people, I get stuff from people and you, and I'm saying, I'm talking about the word and you sending me a text like this or email like this. And then sometimes they call my phone. You ain't got no excuse. Cause I, if you on if you on Facebook, I'm one person that you're gonna see that's gonna read this book. And if you calling me and then you trying to talk to me in a way, I said, what what you doing? God is saying, I set this lady up, and you can hear the word of God, and you still trying to come in sideways on her. Old as she is, yeah. I don't know. Somebody said these guys be trying to come in because they want to uh, get to the United States for what? We got Corona over here too. That be still getting his word. All right. Now, I'm, I've told you everything that happened in chapter four and chapter five. Lord, have mercy. Let's see God in another word. We're going to talk about Elisha in the different encounters that he's going to have. But it's God. It says man of God. So you're talking about God in the man. So I'm going to be reading from... King James, and then I may refer to, to New King James, where they don't have so many these and thou's. Now, Naaman, captain of the host of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master and honorable. That What they're saying is, Naaman, all of this is interesting. Naaman was over the, over the uh, military. And he had favor with the king. He was a great man with his master and honorable because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. He also was a mighty man of valor. It means that he was strong, but he was a leper. Now, a lot of people jump to the part that he's a leper, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to tell you what this means. Naaman and the king were like this. Naaman might have had part of his nose off. He was a leper. 
But Naaman had a reputation in that community. Leper or not, I get the job done. Now, in Israel, if you were a leper, there were certain things you had to, rituals you had to go through. You couldn't just come up on people. You had to be separated from people in, because of the disease you had. But this guy is of Syria. And the, and the king of Syria saw his good man sick. But he, he said, now, this is the, who this guy is. I'm going to put sickness at the bottom. He's a great man. He's an honorable man. God had given, God had given Syria through this guy deliverance. And I said, Lord, when did you, I said, Syria was a country that came against your people. But God gave this guy deliverance. Syria got deliverance uh, by this guy. So I, and he's a mighty man of valor. In other words, this guy, he can hold it down. Strong, on time, known to get the job done. You ask him, it's almost like, oh, you ask, who you say gonna work for you? Name him. You mean the man with the leprosy? Yeah. They put they put that at they put that at the end of his description. When Ahab was king. Ahab was an evil king. God had given them chance after chance to get it right. 22 years Ahab left this world. Well, he was 22 years as king, but he was older than uh, 22. When he became king, he stayed king 22 years, and he was the one that was married to Jezebel. And if you ever heard of Jezebel, that's an ungodly woman. You, people don't even want, I don't even know if anybody call their kids Jezebel. If they do, they do it in secret. Because she don't have a good reputation. But anyway, this guy, Naaman, when King Ahab changed outfits because he was trying to outwit God, God told him through a man of God, you're going to die today. So King Ahab said, I'm not today. He's got, they already made a, <clears throat> they made a commitment to only kill the king. So they all they were looking for the outfit of a king. So Ahab said, I'm changing outfit and put on regular outfit, put on something that'll make me look like a king. So Syria came in fighting. And they couldn't find a king. They, they found Jehoshaphat with the king outfit on. And, and even, even um Ahab told Jehoshaphat, you keep your, you keep your, you keep your robe on. I'm gonna change clothes. Because they're gonna try to kill me. So he changed clothes. Somebody outside, after they, they ran up to Jehoshaphat and said, there the king is. And then Je Jehoshaphat, I'm not Ahab. So they backed off. Said, that's not him. So Ahab thought he had got by. This guy standing outside, the words that he was, he was shooting at Venture. And Venture is, I thought that was a deal. But Venture meant that the guy was shooting. And he was shooting at a target. And he, he was like, I'm going to shoot this. In other words, it's going down where I say it's going down. And Ahab was full of armor. He had a like a, a police uniform where you got a bulletproof thing. He had a, a, a arrow-proof outfit on. But he didn't close it up just a little bit. It didn't close all the way up. And that guy that was shooting shot that arrow straight into that it might have been the size of a buttonhole like this far might have been that size god saw fit to get that arrow straight to that man's heart through that little buttonhole right there it, it, it might not even been that big however big it was the guy that was standing outside shot him and the word said and he shot him and he sat he propped himself up as he was still king but he was bleeding at the same time. And when the army found out that Ahab was dead, then they ceased fire. The bottom line, I was trying to get to say all of that. The guy that shot him has been recorded to be Naaman. As he was just that good. So the word on the street in Israel that says that it's Naaman. 
the word of the word of God does not name him, but the only thing God says, and he gave them victory or deliverance of Syria. And that's the only time that I saw what Syria actually did something that noted that God wanted somebody to get rid of Ahab. And they said, Naaman, this guy with leprosy did it. Then finally we find out that he has leprosy and God says, uh, this strong guy was sick. That's just verse one. All right. And the Syrians had gone out by companies. So now we leave verse one. If God, one thing about it, somebody kill Ahab. And God let it be known. It, it's, we gonna, they gonna, we gonna put, I'm going to put it in my book that everybody going to read about it. Verse two. And the Syrians had gone out by company. Now remember, uh, uh, Naaman is disfigured. He had leprosy. That's a skin disease. And it would take you out to a point that it'll rotten off your fingernails, take all your hair off, your eyebrows, your nose can go in. You just become disfigured. You were something when kids walk by and say, Mom, what's wrong with him? What's wrong with him? You know, even in children, it was something that just came to my mind is that when God had people, because uh, Moses' sister got leprosy, was a leper because she ran her mouth. And then God said, go outside the camp and stay the church. Ain't going nowhere until then. You understand, you don't talk about who to marry and what color they are. And they had to be put aside, away. And, you know, I, I, I really do believe God said the reason why you're going to have to go outside is because I have no distraction when it comes out of my word. You did your, you you did something to call this, and perhaps uh, Naaman did something maybe to cause it too. I don't know what the word didn't say, but he got it. But I do know Moses' sister got it because she ran him out too much, and I think that God said put him out because when the word goes forth, I don't need anybody distracting me. It ain't that I can't hear you; it's that you just got to stay outside this place until you get yourself together. Then you come back. Because when I'm talking, I don't want nobody walking. I don't want nobody on their phone. I want you paying attention. And I know if the little kids in here sit looking at you, they will be paying me no attention. So stay on out there and get yourself healed. And then when the priest announced that you will, and then you come on back in here. I think God is saying, it's not that I'm scared of the folk. I know y'all can't handle it. I can look at them all day. But anyway, if they came to be healed... Then now let me hear you out there so when you come back in here, then I can, everybody can stay focused. That's, that's me talking now. Second verse, and the Syrians had gone out by companies. In other words, there was a group of them and had brought away captive of the land of Israel, a little maid, a little girl. And she waited on Naaman's wife. So when the Syrians went, when they went to war, what they would do was, Grab anybody that they didn't kill. And you had to come back and be a slave to them. That's just how war worked. If you if they found you worthy to live, you got to live as somebody that waited on them. And they found a little girl. Probably separated her from her mom and her daddy. And the little girl said unto the mistress, the mom, the wife of the, uh, I mean, the wife of uh, Naaman, I sure wish my Lord... You know, I know Naaman is such a good man, Miss 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 Naaman. I would God my Lord were was with the prophet that is in Samaria. Ooh, if Brother Naaman, if Mr. Naaman can just get on over there to that prophet. She said, for he will recover that leprosy. That girl spoke, that girl spoke faith. That girl had been around somebody that talked the word of God until she said, if Mr. Naaman can just go to Samaria, I believe that he'll be made whole. I believe that, Miss, Miss Naaman. This girl could have been in a state of depression like kids out of they cutting themselves, want to die. This is just, this, this, we in a sick world. We're not even paying attention to our kid. Here's God saying, I raised up a little girl, allowed her to live. And I didn't let her mama give abortion. And I brought her and put her in the right place. I strategically had her there. And she said something that you reading about. I don't know if this girl grew up 
Because I do know if you do anything in the name of some good, God said, I, I, go, I don't forget. You did something label of love. I don't know if this girl grew up to be somebody's wife and somebody famous. I don't know who she was. God said, I don't, I don't write everything. He said, I don't put down everything I do. He said, because if I did, you can't hold that book. You would have had to put half space for that girl to be in this book. All that I do, the world could not contain the book if I did and got the credit for everything I did. So this little girl told her, her boss, she said, Midnight, I'm just telling you the truth. Um, I'm telling you the truth. If you go on, and, and, and I just wish he was gone on over there to Samaria. There's a man that I know going to meet another woman in the future. Jesus, he's going to be standing there. But it's a man just like what, what we talk about, Jesus. It's, it's a man, oh, he's a prophet. And the word got out from a kid. Listen to you, children. Word got out from a child. At least likely one that we don't pay attention to. Why she's in there probably scrubbing the floor or doing whatever she's doing. Maybe crocheting for the late, I don't know. And one went in and told his Lord, saying, Thus and thus said the maid, little girl, that is of the land of Israel. And the word got out. You know, Miss Naomi got the little girl that worked for her. She said that Naomi, 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 she said she knows somebody can hear them. You know, he is a nice man. He good to everybody. He speak to everybody. Yo, girl, he'll fight you, though. But you know, he looking kind of, he looking kind of, you know, just, ugh. but he good, though. He's still strong. I still see some muscles on him. But they tell me the little girl was in there helping her, helping her, uh, her, her, her uh, you know, she the maid and helping him up. He, name a wife, but I think that well, I don't know what her name is. Word didn't even call her name. Me and name, and then the word got. Let me tell you, oh God, they, oh, well, I gotta let you know that. Oh God, is the king talking about? Her. Oh, I, I call you back. So the word travel, what comes out of our mouth is like a vehicle. If a child speaks, God takes it and put it on wheels, direct that thing. And the word came out of the mouth of a child. And it got into the ears of the king. And mind you, that first verse said the king and, and Nemo was like this. And the king of Syria said, go to, come here, Naaman. Naaman. Naaman, get, it, get, get him off. Get him off. I got a word. Get him off. He said, go to, go. And I will send a letter. He said, take this and I'm going to send this letter. You take this with you and you. Don't no open it and you take it straight to where I'm telling you to go. That's, that's the king of Syria. That these are the ungodly king. Or it is an, an ungodly king. And the king of Syria said, go to go. And I will send a letter unto the king of Israel. And he departed. And who departed? Naaman. All oh, this figure of white as snow. Whatever he did, he knew he was going to get some attention by people looking at him. But guess what? When you are a man understanding who you are, that man had a wife. She didn't leave him because he was more than leprosy, more than a leper. And the king told Naaman, you go. And I'm going to send a letter unto the king of Israel. Take this with you. And guess what Naaman did? Departed and took with him 10 talents of silver and 6,000 pieces of gold and 10 changes of raiment. They said that man took at least today's value would be probably $1.2 million worth of um, a gift from the king. And the letter said, and he brought the letter to the king of Israel saying, and so the king opened up the letter and said, um, the king, what, 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 what is wrong? Oh, this came from King Syria. Okay, what are you saying? Oh, okay. What is he talking about? And he brought the letter to the king of Israel, saying, Now, when you open this letter, behold, I have with the letter, Naaman, my servant to you, that you may recover him from leprosy. First of all, this is how the king opened up the letter looking at, looking at uh, Naaman. Uh, 
go to the... Uh, And then he read that letter. And he said, I sent the letter by Naaman with his own hand to bring it to you. And I'm telling you that you might recover him of his leprosy. See, sometimes when the word from a child get around, the king didn't quite write the letter to the right person. But he knew he was close if he didn't know it was right. He knew he heard something about it over there in Israel. And he brought the letter to the king of Israel saying, Now when this letter is come unto you, behold, I have therewith sent Naaman, my servant, to you, that you may recover him of his leprosy. That's why God wants us to go to him for it. For us, for us, for get in the word for yourself because even the king, he wrote the letter to the wrong person. But anyway... You're a king, so once you get the letter, you know somebody going to find out who really supposed to get it. And it came to pass when the king of Israel had read the letter that he, he tore his clothes, root, and said, am I God? He said, this sick looking man up in here, all the muscles. <laughs> this man killed my granddad. Oh, anyway, let me see that. That he rent his clothes and said, Am I God to kill and to make alive that this man does send me to recover a man of his leprosy? He said, You send this guy to me with a letter. I don't even believe in God. Or well, I supposed to, but I don't act right. I ain't got act. Well, folks, consider, I pray you and see he seeks a quarrel again. He's trying to start a fight. You know that man ain't got no power. I'm over here trying to get people to worship uh, a calf. You trying to start something. That's what you're trying to do. Got a quarrel against me. And he tore his clothes. It symbolizes it's a problem in the king's house. And it was so when Elisha, the man of God, where the letter should have gone, well, you know, it might have had to go to the king and then get to Elijah. Whatever God's order is, God, like, I, I want the king to know I'm sending this. I'm going to let it go straight to his hand. Because I'm getting ready to show Israel what I'm going to do. And he's going to admit that he ain't got no power. I just, I just heard him say, I ain't got no power to do this. Send this man over here with looking like that. And it was so when Elijah, the man of God, had heard that the king of Israel had rent his clothes, that he sent to the king saying, that, Give me the phone. Who's that online? Tell me lies I'm gonna speak to him. How you doing, King? He said, why you rent your clothes? What you tell your clothes for? He said, send a man over to me. Tell him to come to me and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. <laughs> send him on over here, King. And tell your wife to sew your jacket up. <laughs> so Naaman came with his horses and with his chariot and stood at the door of the house of Elijah. He named him like, ain't scared of nothing. I don't care about y'all looking at me. How y'all doing, little children? I didn't. Good evening, young lady. All that stuff going on with his body. This man says, I need to be healed. Got time to be worried about what folk looking at me for. I came in to be healed. Cause the truth be told, he said, y'all see my flaws, but God see yours. You look regular, regular, but the truth is, God, see beyond your regularity. Mine just happened to be vivid where you can see it on the outside. You messed up on the inside because you scared to do what I'm doing. Standing right here at the Elijah door, just left the king office. I, I would need to be here. Well, I'm going to sit back and wait on y'all to say, can I come in the church? I'm coming in here. I'm coming. I want to be, I want to be delivered. Ding dong. He's at. Elijah's house. So Naaman came with his horses and his chariot and his bentley, and he stood at the door of the house of Elijah. Elijah said, I ain't crazy now. I know what the word said. I ain't been opening the door. I'm going to tell you what to do. And Elijah sent a messenger unto him saying, go and wash in Jordan seven times and the flesh shall come again to thee and thou shalt be clean. 
Elijah said, it may not be popular what I'm doing, but if the word said you ain't supposed to be around me and I got the word of God, then I'm going to need for you to go on and do that. Just go get healed. And then when you get healed, you can come back before me. But right now, you can't come in front of me like that. But Naaman was mad, wrought, and went away and said, Behold, I thought he would surely come out to me and stand and do like them preachers do. Who, 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 want, who want to be healed? Because he had the religious stuff in him. He said, I thought for sure. This what I thought. This what I was thinking. I'm thinking now. He would surely come out to me, number one, and stand up there with his suit on, stand, and call the name on the Lord his God, and strike his hand over the place, and then I was going to recover as a lover. We programmed God. That's what he did. But understand that Naaman doesn't have a copy of the word. And if he did, he'd read it. They didn't believe in this word because he, he served another God. But he came to, to the man of God and said, I don't care who your God is. If you get me healed, do it. But at least I thought you was going to beat the tambourine, play the organ, jump up and down, run up and down the island, and then, you know, come down out the pool pit and put your hands on me and do something. Something. We won't be healed. Do what the word said do. The word that came through. A man that allowed the word to speak. And he said, go to the Jordan and uh, wash or take a bath in the Jordan. What he said? And Elijah sent a messenger unto him saying, go and wash in Jordan seven times and thy flesh shall come again to thee and thou shalt be clean. Did he do, we, do, we do, did he do it in seven days? Did he just jump up and down seven times? All I know is get in the joy in the seven time and you're going to be all right. But he said, that ain't on the program of what I thought. And he ain't come up here and do me like this. And I ain't thought he was going to do this. And I thought he at least going to call my name. The pastor should have called my name. All that stuff I be doing for him, he should have called my name. You know how we do. Bring it on home to 21. Y'all mad and stuff. Now, you the one sick. But Naaman was mad. I already read that part. I, mean, I thought he was going to have him on the suit, going to come outside, shake my hand, do all that. He didn't do all, none of this stuff. And then Naaman started thinking. Are not Abana and Faith Pa rivers of Damascus better than all the waters of Israel? Mm, Could have stayed in that suit, stayed where I was living. May I not wash in them and be clean? Oh, you're going to have some out God, and you said, All right, come on down, brother Naaman. They yeah, say you bold and might have been a fellow. You got to hear a word from somebody. So he turned and went away in a rage. Ah, give me my coat. I'm going to get out of here. Give me my, bring me my horse. <laughs> and his servants came near. And this is the beautiful part right here. They work for him, Naaman, right? They came near. Hey, uh, and spake unto him and said, My father, if the prophet had bid thee to do some great thing, would you have not done it? How much rather than when he said to you, Wash and be clean? So I just want to just thought maybe I'd give you something to think about, it, okay? What did God say right there? He said, A soft answer turns away wrath. The word says, and this is how you had to get close to the word. He said, and his servants came near. They weren't loud. Came upon him. And they spoke to him like a man of honor and spake unto him. When you're dealing with somebody with rage, and I'm learning all this, it's a way you got to talk to them. You could turn a monster down. Okay. Cause I be wondering like, how you deal with somebody's angry all the time? God said, I got I got a reason. Cause I wonder like when Jesus said, you know, I never saw a man hit a woman. But there's even a way to how to deal with people like that. You might not want to deal with people like that. But when you don't know the word, you don't know how to deal with people like that. Technique. Is in the word. 
And his servants came near. This guy's all skin, all messed up, body looking all disfigured. Or white as snow. I don't know exactly how it affected him. And then he mad too. And then he ain't scared of nobody. But these servants been around this guy long enough to say, you got to be careful how you talk to him right now. And his servants came near and spake unto him and said, my father, if the prophet had bid you to do some great thing, wouldest thou have not done it? If it was expensive to do, you would have done it, right? Then guess what he did? This big man with all his power and prestige and all this one point or million dollar worth of stuff heard the servant. See, that's what we got to do. See, sometimes you get to a point you got to get an, if people got to get an appointment to see you appointment to see you because you so you so great and you got issues and then you got you got you got to put people on the calendar to see you. You too big. You too big. You gonna miss out. Jesus said that. He said, I'm the king of all kings. Follow my footsteps. You ain't never seen nobody come up, come up to me trying to bring me nothing. I was always in the midst of people. But people are so crazy. We make kings out of people. We, we just as wrong as the one that we made a king. We got it so twisted. We got this thing so messed up until... How you know God ain't putting the mouth of a little girl to put the word on the street that you need healing and then he gonna tell one to serve him before you start acting crazy? Tell the man this. You gotta be humble enough to hear it. We create monsters when we call people leaders and they don't follow after Christ. Then they treat you like you ain't nothing. Then they, then they have the food on the table. Well, it's just me and my family while you sitting up there wishing you could eat at the pencil table. All that crazy stuff we do. I grew up like that. You ought to be the one that's serving. Put them people wherever they can sit. That's what Jesus said. He said, don't you have no open bottom table? Tell the man with a nice suit on, you can have the front seat. We do it and we do it so proud. You know, the pastor don't like the pastor's wife. She knows she got to have this seat right here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Who, who, who been drinking at that cup? Oh, that lady touched the cup. Don't, <clears throat> don't give me that cup. I ain't drinking that up. That's, poor. That's the pastor's wife cup. What you let her put her mouth on there for? People fight over stuff like that. And we got corona. So after them guys told him what to do quietly, get what he did. He listened. Then when he down and dipped himself seven times in Jordan, so he dipped. He ain't going to know one day, two days. Man, I'm going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And the word said, according to the saying of the man of God, according to what God told him to do, and his flesh came out again like unto the flesh of a little child. And he was clean. The Bible said I made him look younger. He gave him skin like a kid. He came out looking like he had been with God. I renewed his youth. Hard headed man, man wasn't gonna listen. I thought he was gonna come out here and do that man, them, 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 them deacons that were around that man. Said, man, be quiet, you know, pastor. Let me, let me name him. Just do what the man said. It ain't hard. Did what that man said do, and the Bible said, I renewed his youth. Got more than I asked for. And he returned to the man of God. He came back to this. I just want to tell you, thank you. And he returned back to the man of God, he and all his company, all big, all his Mercedes, and came. Now, this man don't know God now. But get what happened. And all his company came and stood before him, and he said, Behold, now I know that there is no God in all the earth. I ain't never met nobody like him. But in Israel, I never heard of what you just did. I know now. I'm like Queen Sheba. Sheba said, I heard them people talking about in my hometown how good uh, uh, um, Solomon was. She said, I had to come see for myself. And she said, Now I heard you talk to half, ain't been told. She said, I wasn't believing nothing they said. 
And I asked you some hard questions. And she said, I have ain't been told. Him. But this man is saying the same thing. You ain't nothing to play with. I know that there is a God and he is in Israel. Now, therefore, I pray you take a blessing of your servant. <clears throat> let, me, give me, let me give you an offering. But he said, as the Lord lives, this, this is uh, Elisha, for whom I stand, I, wouldn't, I will receive none. I don't need your stuff. What? And he urged him. He said, take it. He said, I don't need it. I refuse. And Naaman said, well, um, shall there not then, I pray thee, be given to your servant two mules, Burden of earth. In other words, can I dig up some of this dirt outside your house? Can I, can I, I just want something to represent. I walked on some ground that I ain't never walked on. Can I pull up to get two of my mules, get enough of this dirt? For your servant will henceforth offer neither burnt offering nor sacrifice unto other gods, but unto the Lord. Now, the only thing I know about this dirt that he asked for is basically saying I just want something to justify, or to just to take back with me. That I can remember what happened in this place. Can I just have some of your dirt? Can I? Is, I can't. I'll pay you for it, but I know you want the money. And this thing, the Lord pardoned. He said, "In this thing, the Lord." He said, "I want to tell you this right here. I do want some of that dirt, and um, it's just a custom that we do." He said, "In this thing, the Lord pardoned your servant." He said, "I don't know a whole lot about the Word of God." But I got to go back to the, I work for the king. He may not recognize me. I look so good. <laughs> oh, that's me. And this thing, the Lord pardoned thy servant, that when my master goes into the house of Ramon, that we, you know, we, 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 we don't do it like y'all do. To worship there. And he leaned on my hand. Cause I, and I have to bow myself in the house of Ramon. Jeff wants you to know when I bow from now on in the house of Rimmon, the Lord pardoned our servant in this thing. He said, I ain't going down in Rimmon name no more. I got to go with it because that's my job. I take, I take the king down there. But when I fall on my knees, it's going to be your God that I holler at. I just want you to know. I'm telling you what I'm going to do before I do it. And he said unto him, Elijah said, now I'm going to need for you to lift up your hands and raise your hand and repeat after me. <laughs> he did not do that. And he said unto him, go in peace. Because a wise man know how to win people. Well, you got to say this stuff so you really know that you're truly born again. The man said, I'm going and I already told you. It's the God. I'm a mighty man of valor. I keep my word. I ain't talking about it, but your God, even if I'm in a house that, that, that I don't learn about him, I heard about him. And I know for myself that he's alive. And he said unto him, go in peace. So Naaman, young looking self, departed from him. And he walked out a little bit, just a little ways from him. He left. Elisha said, I don't need your money. And uh, you can go. And I'm done. Did all I, 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 whatever whatever was done? It is the Lord that did, and you recognize Him. You need to give me nothing. That wouldn't be two thousand twenty one. I supposed to get a blessing. In fact, why you didn't leave me a blessing at all? I do. You looking like that? You supposed to bless me? It's just give it to the secretary. Anything we'll get it in the name and call it a blessing. Cause we we don't know the word. And then the people that give you all that money, they think they giving it to God. God ain't getting it. How are you supposed to get it, Brenda? Read the word here to you. Stay in the word. You don't know. Somebody that sound like God. And then they might tell you, I don't need it. I don't want it. Then you just keep it until you know when to do what you got to do. But Gehazi, the servant of Elisha, he said, I ain't nowhere in the world. I don't let that man walk with all that money. <laughs> Get his I said, I ain't nowhere in the world, man. Oh, man walking with all that money. All that money, man got. 
Just in case I know, because I'm going to post this on, uh, I plan to post this on YouTube, and they be trying to figure out what I'm saying. I'm saying what Gehazi said, ain't no way in the world I'm letting that man walk away with all that money. But Gehazi, the servant of Elijah, the man of God, the servant of Elijah, but the man of God. Elijah, just because you're hanging out with somebody that's in the word don't mean that you, it just, it just automatically get on you. Just because you're the pastor's wife, if your husband's in the word, you ain't going to automatically get it. It's just my to know to me But Gehazi, the servant of Elijah, the man of God, said, Behold, you can't bake off your grandma, your mama, your sister. You got to get in the word. You got to feed yourself. Get in there and eat. But Gehazi, the servant of Elijah, the man of God, said, Behold, my mouth has spared name of this Syrian and not receiving in his hand that which he brought. But as the Lord live, I will run after him and take some word of him. I'm getting some of that money. Ain't no way in the world I'm going to let that much money get out of my presence. At least Gehazi could have said, I'm just going to add that man to it. I, look, I ain't never seen that much money in my life. Can you just let me have some of it? Just, let's see if he did it like that. So Gehazi followed after Naaman. And when Naaman saw him running after him, he lit down from his chair to Naaman. He said, he got to run out to me. Mother, what do you want? He came down off that chair to meet him. And he got off that chair and ran back to him and said, he said, everything okay? It's all well? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <sighs> I'm just trying to catch up with you. And he said, all is well. My master, there go that lie. My master has sent me saying, behold, even now they have become to me from Mount Ephraim to my... We got two brothers just came in from Ephraim. They just flew in. And they're two young men of the sons of the prophets. Give them, I pray thee, a talent of silver and two chains of garment. They will give me the kiss of my brother. Elijah told me, I tell you, we got two new members. And they need some, um, they need some of that money. <laughs> and to get them two chains of garment, you know, you don't mind. And Naaman said, be content. Take two talents. I'll give you two. You want one, you want, I'm going to give you two. Yeah, that's yeah, but that, yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah, 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 mm -hmm. okay. And he urged him and bound two talents of silver in two bags. He said, let me tell you, put this in your bag. You're going to need it. Go ahead, get your, get your, mm, mm, fill it up. Mm, you need this, your, mm. Put this in your bag. Two chains, he said, two silver, two talents of silver in two bags with two changes of garments and laid them upon his two of his servants and they bear them before him. So I did the guy, do the guy right here work for me. They're going to carry it back for me. We got to raise this money for the children over in Africa. <sighs> we got some children that need some stuff. You know, we always do name, we, we do stuff in the name of children. Raise a lot of money. You know, since Elijah told me, he changed his mind. So he said, can you, can you, can you, he said, that, you said there's two, you gave us both of these? Okay, and two chains? Okay, okay. Thank you. And when he came to the tower, he took them from their hand. Get my stuff! Man, what you think? You, you see Christ? Take them nowhere, man. But he went in, He went, and when he came to the tower, he came back to the place and took them from their hand and bestowed them in the house. And, and he might have said, and stole them and put them in the house and told them, man, go home. And they departed. Pirates, thieves, elders, bishops, principals, Republicans, Democrat, all in the name of I'm gonna do this for somebody else, and as soon as anybody look, get my store. Word. But he went in and stood before the master. How you doing in there? But, 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 Elijah, how you doing? <laughs> oh, no, I ain't, I'm a, I ain't, ain't no sweat on me now. But he went in and stood before his master, and Elijah said unto him, Where you coming from, Gehazi? There's a time to repent. But you got to add one lie to the next lie. And he said, Oh, I ain't been nowhere. Your servant ain't been nowhere. I ain't been nowhere. Uh, you see something on me? I ain't been nowhere. And he said unto him, 
went not my heart with you when the man turned again from the chair to meet thee? He said, let me tell you what I saw. Naaman got out that chair and walked back towards you because you run after him. Didn't you feel something from my spirit to know much of you been around me? Didn't something tell you that you shouldn't do what you're getting ready to do? See, God will give you that time to confess right there. This is a time to get out of the mess you're going to get yourself in. Is it a time? He said, do you think we're living in, in, he said, is it a time to get money from people and to receive garments and olive yards and vineyards? Because that's what you want to do with this stuff. You want to go buy you some olive yards and some vineyards and some sheep and oxen and men servants and maids. He said, you, 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 you caught up with that man because you had a list of grocery lists you want to get. He said, it's not time to receive money. He said, the time now is Corona 2021. And you still trying to grab a dollar. People can't breathe. They can't even get money to bury nobody. And the Lord is still, and you still trying to steal and use my name to get it, God said. I'm talking about in every country on this earth. Every little old bit of back in the woods. You still, right now, you still stealing. He says, it's a time to do things. It is a time. And it, when you see this country, Israel is so backslidden and so messed up in their mind. This man grabbing dirt, talking about, can he take it back over there where he is? And when he go back into the, this man ain't ready to be, he said, don't you know what you're going to do to him when he find out you, you lie? The man may not never look at God again. And the little girl that, that waited and, and you take my reputation, the little girl got a word from the Lord to let the man know to come over here. And then the king finally got his attention to see this man looking like a young man and then you still trying to put old tainted, crooked way to blaspheme God's word. Oh, I'm just celebrating my daddy's birthday. You think it's time to have a party? In this world, people die and going to hell every single day. And we can't stop it. We just wait on the news and say, who died, who did today? People die and empty before God, and we, we stick them on in heaven anyway. And you think it's time to get off? Come on by the church and we got something for you. We want you to come on up here and take some communion. I ain't heard nobody say get in this word yet. You got to be somebody to tell somebody to get in the word because folk ain't going to listen to people that's servants and little girls and old ladies. You ain't listen. But you still clowning. Just like Gehazi. Still taking pictures. Ain't nobody in church. Look at us. We heal. Ain't time. It looks out of order. He said, I tell you what's going to happen. Since you want to buy some maid servants, olive gardens and some vineyards and some men servants, because you got enough money. You just, you just took enough to get all that. But guess what you're going to be wearing that outfit with? Some leprosy. The leprosy, therefore, Naaman shall cleave on the leprosy, therefore, of Naaman shall grab your body and cleave to it. Not only yours, but every baby that you ever had for your seed, every, you you gonna be known when they look at your children. You ain't finna die. Everybody that come through your seed, cause you like sleeping with your wife. Gonna have leprosy forever. And he went out from his presence. And they thought it was snow. White ass snow. This is the word of God. A lot of lessons in here, a whole bunch of them. And we still playing. And you can't afford to sit up and wait for somebody to tell you something. These folks ain't gonna read it like this. Because it'll be indictment. They should, but we don't play church for so long. But get this book is this book is old, and it's been sitting on the shelf all this time, 
And then we wander and we work and we run trying to figure out where's that word from the Lord. We, we say anything. I'm telling you, if you say, if I read it, and I say this again, if you say, if I read it, I may not get the same thing you get. You ain't going to get a chance to read it. God ain't playing. He says, I'm sick of y'all lying on me. He says, my book is easy. I can talk this book right here all the way from the bottom to the top. And it had 27 verses. And I know it just like I know Mary had a little lamb. Why? Because I read it. This is the things that God is saying that we're in darkness of. And we still play. We play every day. It's getting ready. I'm telling y'all. If the Lord is behind this, if we don't get this word, we're going to be in trouble. All I'm saying is this stuff is happening in 2021. And this stuff was written about four, five thousand 5,000 years ago. Because Jesus has been gone 2020. So this is about 3,000 years old. Because when, when uh, David was king, it was like a 1,000 years, right, 900 and something. It's a little bit closer to the prophet's going to start talking about something new because this old stuff y'all doing ain't working. He said, I'm getting ready to talk about a king that's going to come. And it's the last time God's going to holler. If we don't go in this word and stop playing. And now we're sitting in areas we can't even go nowhere. So much snow until we ain't never seen nothing like it. And we still stuck. She be on mine every day. God breathing every day. As long as he let me breathe, I'm going to read the next chapter. And if he let me get up in the morning, I'm going to tell y'all again that God loves us. God loves us. He said, I ain't mad at you. I just want to introduce myself to you. You haven't played church long enough. This is the truth. This is true. But if we keep on playing, God be done snatched at the internet. Said we won't read. Then what we gonna do? Y'all, I absolutely love y'all. But I ain't playing.